Uh, hi, Ankit. Thank you so much for taking out time uh, on an extended uh, weekend. And I see you are in your factory today, which is the usual place that you love being very atypical of founders. Um, to briefly introduce Ankit to everyone, um, Ankit is the founder of Wakefit Mattresses. Wakefit started as a mattress company uh, and a sleep solutions company, but is very quickly expanding to a home solutions uh, platform and a venture. Um, Ankit started Wakefit in November of 2014. Um, and as I discussed, it initially its initial focus was mattresses and pillows before, it's, before it branched out in other product categories. Uh, a very product first founder, a very um, uh, uh, customer NPS focused founder, Ankit in six years has scaled Wakefit to a 450 crore plus revenue company. And this is one of the very rare startups uh, which from day one has been profitable and has continued that journey since. Um, Ankit graduated from IIT Roorkee and before started, starting Wakefit, he worked with Bear uh, Chemicals. Ankit, thank you so much for taking our time. Thank you, thank you, Yash. Uh, I really appreciate your kind words there. Uh, hey, hi guys. Uh, I'm not able to see you, but I think I'll... Uh, so I, I generally start up uh, my conversation by trying to understand my audience. Uh, I think I spoke to Yash and Yash mentioned uh, most of you are already an entrepreneur, probably become trying to become an entrepreneur. Uh, so I, I think I would like to, uh, I would like this interaction to be as, uh, you know, uh, as interactive as possible. Uh, please shoot your questions, um, you know, in the, in the chat box. I would love to address all of that. In fact, uh, you know, if you want me to tell you certain stories, uh, you know, the other side of the mental or the emotional stories of mine, and in any specific point you want me to cover, you please put it up. I think uh, as I'm explaining my whole journey, I, I would love to just address that part specifically for you guys. Uh, and then, of course, any any time you find it a little boring, let me know. <laughs> I, I would probably uh, change my tone also. All right. So this is uh, the, the subject given to me is about uh, <clears throat> mental journey, and hence uh, I think a lot of focus is going to be on the emotions, uh, uh, on on how big fit has been through, and what I've learned in my life in this last six years, what went through, uh, what I've been trying to achieve, and stuff like that. Uh, so, so let me quickly, uh, you know, mention to you about 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 emotions. Uh, so, what happens in emotions is, uh, you know, for for every decision that you know anybody makes uh, in 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 their day to day life, any decision that you make in your day to day life, I think everything is just being driven by emotions. So, I, I'm also very very strong opinion that you know there are very very few people, few people who are like Steve Jobs who are able to make think through and clearly see what is there. In the next three years, what I'm building for the next five years, uh, and there are very few like Steve Jobs, but most of us, uh, including yes, myself, the people that I'm connected to in the you know entrepreneurial uh, family, I see everybody is driven by emotion. I will give you some examples. So I've seen, you know, if, if you have to, if you have to let's say choose uh, uh, between a coffee uh, and a tea, generally, it it is it is something that you already know. You don't you don't think this this much of caffeine you require this much of milk you require, you know it already. It's the emotion which is already there in the back of your head when you're trying to decide between a coffee and a tea. Similarly goes for, if you, if you want to decide for, let's say I want to go to Goa for a destination, uh, for a holiday destination, or you want to go to a Maldives for a destination, I think you would already know because Goa would have a different emotion connected to you and a Maldives would have a different connection. Similarly, if, if you're thinking of going on, on an entrepreneurial journey, you would, you would have to take a very bold, bold decision and I guess that decision is going to be mostly emotional. Just like, for example, if you have to go for an MBA or you have to go for a job, generally there is a lot of thought process that goes behind um, before you make the decision. And I think that also is emotional. Uh, if you're thinking of working in a, in a company for somebody or you want to start up a business of yourself, I think that is also something very strong emotion which is driving. Uh, because see, there's no, there's no fool in the world who would like to quit a nine to five job and you know, earn a decent salary and you know, uh, you know, just quit that and uh, start up something because this is going to be a different journey altogether. You are just willing to sacrifice your whole, whole life, whole, uh, you are going to get so much disturbed that you have to literally be a fool to, uh, to, you know, 
take up on an entrepreneurship. So which means an emotion can only lead you to a point where you start taking decisions which are very, very abnormal, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, most of the times, most of the times that I have seen personally myself, most of the time probably yes would have seen or you guys would see or you've already seen the decisions, the bigger decisions in your life you would be taking based on, uh, based on the emotions uh, you know, that you're going through or that you have been through. I'll give you some examples to validate this. So Ankit, I think you went on mute. Yeah, I think, yeah, sorry. So I'm saying, I, I was just some, giving some examples to validate this theory. Uh, if, if you happen to read about Uber, I think the founders were you know, trying to take up a taxi and they, they did not get the taxi and they were on the road for about an hour or so. And you know, this emotion triggered in them that, you know, is it, why is it so difficult to get a taxi? And hence the Uber started. Uh, if you look at Facebook, uh, the Zuckerberg was uh, probably an introvert who did not like to go and you know, have, uh, you know, was not so social in his life, but he found out like, if I have to solve that problem, if I don't want to meet somebody, can there be a social uh, network to emotionally connect with people, right? So that's why the Facebook happened. Similarly, if you look at Wakefit, I think I'll give you some small example of myself. I wanted to buy a matter for myself and I was making a decent amount of money by, you know, when I was working for a company called Buyer and I happened to go and visit a branded shop. And I was surprised to, to the core of my understanding that a mattress could not cost me this much because I, because still then I was, I was about 26 years old. My father used to buy, you know, generally mattresses, beds, everything in, in our house. This was the first time that I was making my decision. I went to a shop. I said, what is the price of this mattress? They said, so it's 12,000 bucks for a single size mattress. And I, because I used to sell all the chemicals, those fabrics uh, to manufacture the foam. I could realize it's just 2000 rupees worth of material. How come he can be selling us some, you know, 12,000 bucks. And that was the emotion that came into me that, you know, people are probably fooling in this industry. Uh, I cannot just spend so much of money if it's not so much of worth. And hence that emotion triggered. So generally what happens, these kind of emotions, you know, will stay with you. Uh, they'll stay with you and somewhere in the core of your head, somewhere in the backside of your head, these emotions will stay with you. And the moment you, you know, you, you come to a point uh, where you, you want to decide you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to become a businessman, or you want to start up something, I think that emotion become very, very strong. You start uh, understanding it, uh, reading it, you know, sleeping over it, very, very strongly about that problem. In fact, for myself, when I realized that, you know, it was, uh, they, they were asking me to pay six times the price of a mattress, you know, that emotion came to me very strongly when I wanted to figure out for myself that what to do in my life. Because I thought, you know, I, if, if I'm going through this, I'm sure hundreds of them are going through this, and if hundreds of them are going through this, why not solve this problem? And that is why you will see if, you're, if you love to watch uh, Shark Tank, if you love to watch, let's say, any program, you know, where there are a lot of entrepreneurs, come, you will see a lot of them would be driven by emotions. A lot of them would be talking about, you know, uh, this is something they felt in their life, they have, that the thing happened to them, and because of that, they want to solve it. So it's generally an emotional decision, and hence, you know, most of the times you would like to go with emotions very, very strongly uh, instead of using a lot of mind. So being an entrepreneur is never subjected to how mindful you are about to your approach or the problem is so big. In fact, you know, it's one of the funny thing, uh, what happened to me is that, you know, I was about to get married when I was starting this company and I happened to mention to my in-laws and, and I said to them that, uh, you know, I'm starting up a mattress company and they really made jokes of me and they said, <laughs> who, who sells mentor? Like you and I, and you pass it from uh, uh, such a reputable college, and you have invested so much of your life in selling, becoming a sales manager. Like who, who in the world sells a mentor, right? So, so what I'm trying to tell you is, even though whatever happens, and even though it could look how foolish to start something, but if you have had an experience, if you have had an emotion triggered to you, most likely you will start end up something like that, and most of the startups in the world are started like this. So it's very, very important that we understand that emotion plays a very, very important role uh, in deciding what you're going to do in your life. Uh, so, um, sorry, if I can come in over here, a lot of people who have come in this session, there are two kinds of people, people who say that they're accidental entrepreneurs. So they happen to become uh, entrepreneurs by some emotion trigger mm -hmm. or people who prepare to be entrepreneurs. Uh, because you came from a business family uh, 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 in northern India, uh, yeah. basket mein, uh, like, did you know that you always wanted to become an entrepreneur and you trained yourself for it? 
or you were an accidental entrepreneur no i think i i was an accidental uh, entrepreneur and uh, and 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 i think uh, my zeal to become an entrepreneur became very very strong uh, when i saw a very young generation like me you know who was just taking over their father's business they used to come at about 12 o'clock in the factories or in the offices would leave at around 4 o'clock like a typical family business right they would come at 12 leave at 4 they're driving their audis and bmws and i was like these guys work for 4 hours and they're driving an audi i'm the guy who's riding a bike from 9 in the morning to let's say 7 in the night and always on the road i used to feel like like if if the the, the time that you invest in to do it is so much worth because money could be made by probably just working for hours a day so i think that's where i got lot of trigger coming to me and i i don't think i was natural right i i mean unnatural i think it was very natural to me that it was very progressive slowly and steadily i started realizing that you know you do not need to be uh, a coming from a family where you have a family background of running a business in fact my father you know works for bs and my mother is housewife my you know sister is a, is also working so there's nobody in my family who is actually owning a business right got it so ankit sorry if i will just extend to that um, you know when you decided to be an entrepreneur walk us through that journey did you prepare yourself you said you were just getting married yeah. um uh, so, like how did you prepare yourself uh, you know mentally emotionally did you know that it would be a hard journey how were the first 6 months of it yeah that's so see uh, when i wanted to become an entrepreneur uh, when i realized you know you do not uh, you, you know i want to become something i want to make something meaningful of, out of my life and that was an emotional i think uh, most of my family most of my friends uh, most of my colleagues they they literally made uh, fun of me and we will go for a evening party and you know they'll just joke me ankit is going to become an ambani one day ankit is going to become a steve jobs one day you know, they just they just used to mock me so i think uh, this is very common if you if if it happens to be a common man becoming an entrepreneur that the the environment around around you would always not be so supportive of what you want to do and hence i'm saying that emotion or that mental strength becomes very very important because you know always driven by emotions if you look up to people uh, uh, that you know somebody is going to come and tap on on your shoulder and say hey you know why don't you become an entrepreneur i don't think anybody is going to tell you that until as you come from a very strong family background who is used to running a business and your father actually wants you to become a businessman one day right so if if you if you come up from a very uh, uh, a very uh, natural normal indian uh, traditional family i think you will find a lot of constraints around you in fact with me uh, as i said my in laws were kind of frightened by getting to know that you know i'm, I'm going to quit my job and i'm going to start up uh, my father uh, was of an opinion that we were a fool that we got you to you know uh, uh, you know to uh, to an iit we spent so much of money to send you to kota to prepare for iit you paid up your fees you joined the mnc now what happens to you look at mama you look at your uncles cousins you know all of them are making just 20000 30000 40000 a month and they're just sacrificing on their life there's nothing right and what a fool are you right so uh, i think i went through all of this but i was able to frankly speaking i did not just try to overcome because i was just sold to myself and i i knew it that i had to do something in my life and i knew it that it it had to happen because there was a strong emotion i had that i had to become something right and it was just foolish an idea so in fact one one point i uh, i was i was reading somewhere to become an entrepreneur you probably need to have three eyes uh, one is an idea and second is the investment and third is you have to be really an idiot <laughs> so so that idiot part is really really important because most of the times people around you around you would not probably support the idea because it is your own personal emotion which has triggered that idea probably the other person has not connected well to it right so that that's how, that's how it went for me uh, so you know i'll i'll, I'll give you uh, some some uh, a small uh, perceptions from the story um, you know when i was there in the market to buy the mattress uh, i i obviously did not buy it because it was so so hefty the price then i had to call up my friends because i used to you know work in that market so they had a factory to make matters and then i called them and i said hey i want a mattress <laughs> yeah you know of course we will give it to you and they happened to deliver uh, a mattress to me and this kind of time i was you know i was feeling that you know this guy would not probably loot me this going to give me at a factory price and i'll be happy paying 2000 3000 bucks in fact i did not speak to him 
to give me a matter of what ABC price. I said, whatever price made, we just send the bill. And this guy sent a bill of about 7,000 bucks. And I was again surprised. Like a middleman who just owns a factory, it's not a branded matter at all. He's also charging 3.5 times. I think that that actually triggered even further, you know, what is going uh, wrong in, along in this market that if, if a brand is making money, I understand that. If a brand, non-brand is also making money, I don't just understand that. If a factory is charging three times, I just cannot believe it, right? So the, so the idea evolved from there that you know to go and solve the uh, matters of the market. And in fact, then you go through a journey of, uh, you know, figuring out, uh, talking to uh, people in this industry. I, I went to a lot of retailers. I went to talk to some distributors. In fact, I you know, spoke to my family friends to understand how did they uh, decide to, you know, buy a mattress for themselves. Or a pillow for themselves, and, and that's where the story started. Yeah, but uh, but I think uh, the whole learning from from the first six months of journey of for for the first one year of the journey is that I've I've seen uh, if you look at uh, uh, how strong my mental wealth was and how emotionally uh, you know sorted my head was. Uh, I've seen I can we can divide this journey into you know two phases. Uh, there are good days and there are the bad days. And it is not something that the good days comes first and the bad days goes and then the good day comes. I think it can come any day. Uh, any day of your life, you can have a good day and any day of your life, you can have a bad day. And, and these good day and bad days are the extremes. They're, they're not the normal good days and bad days that you did not have a coffee today and it's a bad day. And, and then you had a full eight hour sleep, you had a good day. Right? It's not like that. You, you are going to have, you're going to see so much of the emotional uh, good days that you would feel like you want to jump out of your cliff and just fly like a bird and when your worst day comes you would probably just want to not talk to anybody go and probably cry somewhere uh, you know they're so dark uh, that you would probably want to just you feel so ashamed and you would like to just go sit around in a corner and probably cry if you want right so I'm, I'm talking about these kind of days I'll give you some perspective from it uh, when I started my business uh, the good days some of the good days I'll give you example uh, there's a friend of mine from college. He happened to visit a friend of him uh, in his hometown. And this friend of him uh, called him and said, hey, come over, I'll show you something amazing. And this friend went there inside the bedroom. He said, sit on this mattress. He sat on this mattress and uh, he said, do you feel different? He said, yeah, something is different. What is it? Then he said, I bought a mattress online from Amazon. Uh, and he said, which company is it? He said, wait for it. You know, and this guy, because he's my friend, he knew it was Wakefield. And this was the first time that he called up suddenly out of that room. He said, hey, you, do you know this happened, that your matter was actually with my friend? He didn't know that I know you and all stuff like that, right? That gives you a validation that a friend, a friend has actually bought it and he's showing off. He's calling him to his bedroom and asking him to sit on the mattress and just try it on because he feels so, 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 uh, so great about using this product, right? So this... Uh, this was just a good day for me. Like since morning, my my all 42 teeth will be visible. I'll have extra meal probably. I'll have a lot of coffees. I'll just joke. I'll just flaunt around. And there are many instances like this. So you get a very nice positive review on Amazon. You get a very nice review on a, on a Google. Uh, 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 let's say some some customers will call because initial in my beginning days, people used to call me directly. I was a salesman. Uh, for the company, every call used to land to me. Most of the times, the people called up and say, "Hey, I'm using a mattress. I just want to bless you with this. That you know, you're the ju just the right guy, and I think you're doing the right." Part. So these kind of product validations, uh, the unnatural accidents where you know people have bought your products and they got to know that this belongs to a friend. Uh, I think you get so high. These are the good, good, great days of an entrepreneur that you know you are you're being backed by uh, some of the accidents, right? And the bad days would be like uh, very similar to this. A friend's friend's bought, and uh, he happened to complain about us such a stupid mattress. I don't know which brand is this, and he said what is it? And he said, you know, this is a big fit. So it's the same call came from that room, and I think it was equally worse for me. I I I would, you know, I I'm generally very fearful. I I fear a lot. Uh, so this is also a very strong emotion I have, and I think that fear of receiving the negative feedback from a customer, uh, that fear of, uh, you know, getting to know that somebody's actually not happy using a big fit product uh, and he might shout around, he might let other people know, uh, you know, that the product is not good, really made me sleepless. Uh, I don't know, know whether you would believe this or not, but uh, this is actually truth. Uh, for the first three years 
uh, of starting a big fit. Uh, I had every single day, I was woken up at six o'clock in the morning. If I sleep at two, if I sleep at three, if I sleep at nine, I will just wake up at six o'clock. Do you know why? Uh, I, I'll tell you why. Uh, because I would just like to see as soon as I wake up, if there is somebody who's written on social media negative about Wakefit, is there anybody who's called me in the middle of night saying, hey, you matters are stupid, I just woke up at three o'clock. See, imagine a matters company, your customers are not comfortable. They sometimes call you at two o'clock, three o'clock. And a day where somebody, you know, a person was drunk, he called me at one o'clock and he started, you know, giving me left, right, center. Uh, so, you know, I used to wake up at six o'clock and I had a habit of, you know, I was very, very impatient. And I would WhatsApp the person at six o'clock in the morning after finding out who's that person um, from who has written on social media and, and try to try to ask them, are you are you awake? Can we have a conversation? Sometimes people will get woken up by 6 30, 6 45. We'll, I'll just go down the balcony and, and find a very peaceful place and just talk to customer to figure out what went wrong and solve it for me. Right. So so the the good days are very, very few. The bad days are you know just too many. And if you compare the impact on your mental stability or your mental wealth, uh, the bad days always overtake about the good days. If any bad day would be worse than any best of the good days that you might have in your life. So what happened in two, three years of my time when you know I was going through this continuous bad days, good days, bad days, good days, I think I saw uh, a very common thing coming out of me. Uh, the common thing was if, if you can control or give a direction to your emotion, then only you can come over it. Otherwise, you'll be getting stuck in that thing and you are not never going to solve that problem. So it is very, very important for an entrepreneur to realize that bad days are going to come and you have to somehow work on it and to convert it into a good day or, or probably make it a good day someday. The reason for this, I'll tell you, once you are in a bad day or let's say once you're in a bad emotional feeling because the customer has complained, and you got to know you made a shitty product for him or a shitty service to him. Uh, uh, you cannot make good decisions that day. You cannot, you are not yourself. You're not natural. Like imagine if you're trying to start up a company and you, let's say your, your, your family supporting you or let's say you're working in a company and then you have a rough idea that you want to start up something. These are good days because you're getting your salary in time. There's no pressure from the family, the family is also stable, your friends are chilling out, you're having your beers and parties in the night, right? But you, there's no cognitive load on you that you have to deliver the next day. You have to make sure that the company is going in the right direction, right? These are the good days. So those are the days the ideas are born. Those are the days where you become an entrepreneur. You start thinking about what you have to do in your life. But look at the worst days if you've had in your life. If you reflect yourself on those days, you will find out all the bad days would have taken you to bad decisions. Or you would have probably taken up a fight with your friend. You would have probably not wanted to talk to anybody. There would be a lot of negative thoughts. So imagine this happening when you're running a startup. Imagine this is happening when you have, let's say, 20 people working for you and you continuously having bad days, right? And it is gonna happen because if you don't have a bad day, I'm guessing you will have the worst day one day, right? Uh, until unless you're really, really, uh, until unless you're a steep drop which I guess most of us would not be. Uh, so what you have to do or what I did myself is to start realizing the pattern that I said, if there are good days, I've always taken a positive decision. I've always found my own ground roots. So today, uh, in fact, today, you know, we were going through all of this and today between uh, one o'clock to three o'clock, I had my own time uh, sitting in my office and in the factory. And I was thinking like, let's talk about it what I've done, what is going wrong for me. And I happen to know that, you know, we did some, we took some decision about uh, seven days back. I just reflected on whether that decision was good or bad. And when I started thinking over it, I called up somebody in my team. I said, can you validate? It looks like this is what I've done wrong. This looks like this is what I've done right. He came back to me after two hours and said, what's your right? Right. What I'm trying to tell you is because I had a lot of positive energy around me and it was a good day. I was able to think through of the decisions that I've taken in my startup and I started building positive things out of it. Now imagine a worst day, right? You, you go, go out and happen to meet an investor and the investor says, I don't really think that you know, you're, you're worth it or the idea is worth it or the philosophy is worth it or whatever maybe. 
you know, maybe worth it or not worth it. You come out of that room and take a decision in your life. You will always regret that decision because you would have taken that decision because of certain pressure, a lot of negative emotions. So it's always, these things are going to happen in your life if you want to become an entrepreneur, you're already an entrepreneur. And, and I guess I'm very, very young to even say that, you know, I've seen most of it. It's just six years of my entrepreneurship. I guess I'm going to continue working on this. I'm expecting a lot and a lot more negative days are going to come. So I've started preparing myself uh, from an angle of making sure that, you know, uh, how do I make out of the bad days? So I've stopped waking up at six o'clock. Now I wake up at eight o'clock. I call up a meeting and I, I try to ask them, what is it that we're doing wrong? Why are people still going on social media and writing wrong about us? Why is not everybody happy? Because the core fundamental is if I prepared a product, let's say a mattress, and it was made with a, with a philosophy of making everybody happy, happy, everybody comfortable when they're sleeping and that is not happening, what is wrong? Like this is a core solid fundamental principle on which Wakefit was built. And hence, I'm able to reflect upon it. I'm able to see what all went wrong and hence drive my energy, passion, everything into that direction. Uh, so, Ankit, sorry to interrupt your flow over here. Do you think that uh, are there habits that you build? So you said that rather than waking up at six o'clock, you wake up at eight o'clock and have this meeting as the first day. How do you build this muscle? How do you prepare yourself? How do you balance yourself? Yeah, so uh, I, I think I, there are a lot of ways different people do it. I would tell you what, you know, how I have done it. Uh, what I have realized is that uh, the decisions that I was taking when, when I'm really off and the decisions that I was taking when I'm really good, I think I saw the really positive impacts of it. I was able to make most of the happy days because of the positive decisions. So I started realizing that, you know, if I'm upset and if I'm keeping myself upset throughout the day, nothing's going to happen. So it's, it's just a realization that happened that, you know, being upset is not going to help you. Being, being, solving the problem of that is making an upset is going to solve it. It's just a realization that you get to. Uh, and of course, there are... How do you build on that realization? Because it's very difficult, right? I, I think, say, if you are upset, how do you, like, you know, consciously realize it? How do you get yourself out of it? How do you, how do you constantly keep on doing it? Because I've known you now for four years. Mm-hmm. And I've generally found you very calm about things, very transparent about things. Like, uh, like, is there a playbook for that? Uh, I, I, I think uh, for uh, it, this, I don't think there's a playbook. Uh, playbook, uh, but there are certain fundamentals which I believe, in. and uh, you know, there, I, I happen to read a lot of books, uh, uh, and I've read almost most of the big brands which have been built over a period of time. And I've seen entrepreneurs' journey. I've seen what people have become, let's say what Walmart has become, what IKEA has become, how Amazon became Amazon, how Flipkart became Flipkart, right? So when you see and reflect on journeys of a lot of the startups, you realize that, you know, if you realize certain facts, the facts are, uh, if the business on which you are built and the fundamental on which you have built the business is strong, it's true, and you have gone through that experience and you're emotionally connected to that fundamental, nothing can hamper you to believe that it is going to work for you, right? So if let's say my mattresses, I made them the most comfortable mattresses for me, and I realize that some of them are not happy, then the fundamental is still the same that I have to still build a mattress, which is even better than that, which is one of, you know, not even let have any, any single customer being unhappy. So it's just that you have to reflect upon yourself what you were trying to solve and you have to just validate whether you are going in that direction or not if you're being you know, in that uh, uh, phase of your life where uh, it is just taking you away. I'll give you a certain, uh, just one quick example uh, on this. Uh, uh, so when I was starting up in, in the first six months, I used to sell one mattress in four days uh, when I started up. You know, the first mattress that I sold in four days, I was just, I, that was the best good day of my <laughs> Life because I, I saw somebody bought my mattress with me. <laughs> so, and this happened to be an American couple who was settling in Jaipur. And they happened to, I happened to call them, you know, ask them, you know, thank you and all that. You know, I did uh, a lot of thanks and wishes to them. Uh, happened to deliver the mattress. And obviously, then I progressed from there. Then I it became one mattress per day. In two months of time, it became two mattresses every day. And that, like four months of time, it, it happened to a point that I now started selling four mattresses, five mattresses, six mattresses a day. Right now, in these six months, uh, when I reached a level of five matters and six matters a day of a sale, 
there were days uh, where I used to sell no mattresses, zero. Uh, there were days when the mattress is not sold, but whatever I have sold the last day, it got cancelled. The order got cancelled. It was like negative sale <laughs> for the day, right? So, you know, what I did, uh, you know, I, 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 just, I would just step out of my uh, office. By then, I used to have a very small room somewhere. Uh, I would just step out. I remember that day, it was my birthday. It was 19 September 2016. Uh, I have to walk out of my room at 9 o'clock in the morning. I was in Kormangla. I kept on walking till 4 o'clock in the evening. I just kept on walking. And every five minutes, I'll just open up my uh, Amazon account and uh, I'll just see if an, an order has come or not. Till four o'clock, there was no order. And my family, my parents had come uh, from, from Delhi. They came to Bangalore. My in-laws also had come to celebrate my uh, birthday. And, uh, you know, I, I realized my face was so sad. I just could not go with that face to my family, right? So I, I said in my car around four o'clock, I said, there's no point worrying about it, but in fact, you know, I was really, really terrified inside, like, what is going on? I started challenging myself, like, whether I've gone in the right business or not. Why is it that nobody's buying my mattress and stuff like that? And that day at four o'clock, I started in my car. My wheel sheets were closed. I generally try to run AC and, you know, I will turn the music. I said, I, and that, that day I put the music to the max so that, you know, nobody can hear what I'm talking. I started talking to myself, right? And at that time, it was a funny incident. Now that I, you know, look at it, it's really a funny incident. I'm driving my car. The, the music is on 34, which is the maximum of that. I used to drive a Honda Brio at that point of time. And I started just shouting. I don't know why. But I just started shouting like crazy. I started beating my hands to the doors, uh, to staring. Like, what has happened to the world? Why they're not buying it and stuff like that? You know, am I doing something wrong? And then suddenly, I, you know what happened? I just realized that getting a good, comfortable mattress is actually everybody's need. So if nobody's buying, it's not because, it's not because uh, they are not buying in the market. It's because just I'm not able to sell in the market. It's, the market exists. I just started validating my fundamentals of starting a business. And that is the day I realized, you know, I took up an oath in that car by yelling, I'm going to make everybody sleep on Wakefield Matters in India and the world. Just give me two, three months of time. I'll just make it happen. I, I convinced myself. And <laughs> I just made myself calm, pleased home. Suddenly I opened up my Amazon app and saw, and suddenly those four orders came. I was like, boss, <laughs> the God is supporting you. <laughs> so these are all just funny incidents. So what I'm trying to tell you is if you go into this habit of, you know, worrying too much about the bad days, what you can do probably is two things. One is read books. You go through the life of many entrepreneurs. You would realize that, you know, you would get a lot of perspective. Uh, second is start thinking about fundamental of building that business. Why did you even start that business? I think you'll get a lot of validation. You'll start understanding uh, what is important that you're building. Very interesting, Ankit. I, I think uh, it was a fairly honest answer. Uh, Ankit, like in these early days, who were your believers? Who were your support systems? Who was the village of people that would be unconditionally there for you? Uh, how did you build that over the uh, over six years? Because yeah. I think when you started, it was some 50, 60 lakhs uh, capital. I mean, you were profitable the first day. So I have two questions. A, who are these believers? And the second is you were very contrarian in your approach, right? There were sleep worlds of the world that existed, large 1,200, 1,500 crore revenue companies, massive distribution. Uh, coming over there, taking a very contrarian product first, uh, digital distribution approach like uh, what was your conviction in that and like how did you build on it yeah so uh, so i think uh, this this goes back to uh, you know my job when i was working for akosha there was a startup by then uh, called as akosha i was working for them and that's where i was working as a digital marketing manager sometimes as operations manager because i was a startup guy uh, you know the founder hired me to do any random stuff in the company it was the job role was called startup junkie which means wherever they see the junk, they'll throw me and they'll I'll expect me to clean it up. <laughs> so I just love that profile right? because, see, I get to see different perspective of a digital world. I get to see how important the business is, how important the products are, how important it is to understand the roots of the business, the fundamentals of doing the business, 
what why principles are important why missions are important why visions are important right so you get to understand so much within that nine months or 12 months of time i just learned that customer is actually the king and if if people are sitting in their offices if people are sitting in their laboratories and designing something without talking to the customers they're bound to fail and i just happened to realize that you know all of my competition you know you just mentioned about they were actually sleep, sitting in their room and i was just so happy you know these guys are sitting in their room they don't know like uh, uh, somebody in bang who just for a matter of i did not you know he bought it from those competitions right uh, so that is something uh, uh, which i learned when i was working and of course I, i i was fond of reading books so i realized that you know how important it is to build fundament, yeah. fundamentals on customer first approach uh, customer centric approach the product first approach right so it's it's very principled to me i think uh, i i would say it's very natural uh, i have not taken a very deep scientific approach to me i think by nature i'm very uh, customer centric uh, first thing second my second thing said about uh, uh, the early believers or in the last 6 years you know who has believed in you and you know, who who was probably not believed in you how the ecosystem has been uh, i think i would i would like to uh, mention one thing very strong dear yash uh, the thing is uh, if if you happen to have a mentor if you uh, happen to have a uh, a supporter for you let's say your parents your wife or, or your husband or whomsoever right it is going to be very short lived uh, it is going to be very very short lived because the person who is actually kind of supporting you in the whole journey might have his or her own ways or her own experiences in his or her own life correct so they can be having their emotions working in a different direction their approach can be different they see in a different world so there are suggestions answers most of the things are going to be different but i am a believer of that you have to believe in yourself uh, take an example of an athlete uh, if you see an athlete you will realize that you know these guys they know there's only going to be a one winner who's going to get a gold medal at olympics right but there are thousand of them who run in daily they just i mean it's going to be the worst of the exam uh, that there's only one guy who passes out and thousands of millions of the people uh, around the world right but they just keep on working they just keep on working and they just believe in themselves so what i'm trying to convey is one has to be of himself fully one has to believe on his own fundamentals one has to believe himself and just keep on doing the hustle the no matter what happens no matter who tells you what whether there's a supporter there's a distractor there's a there's a you know a guy who's just making a fun of you i don't think anything should impact you you should feel blessed if you're getting a mentor in your life who's probably you know thinking like you who's motivating you at every different stage of life but i guess many of us will not find them uh, if you find them well and good take good advantage of them learn from them learn from their experiences but the most important thing is that you believe in yourself you believe why you started uh, in fact today yes what i do uh, every day this is this is my daily uh, habit that i go for a walk for every day at least one hour be it in office be it in my home i just find uh, one hour for myself and i'll just go go and walk for one hour independently alone this does two things to me one is it makes me emotionally stable i'm very very calm because i'm able to go back self myself to the root so i go very very strong test base the road and just think why did i start this what am i doing now what are the decisions that i have taken which are actually matching up to what i wanted to become 6 years back is it resonating with what you're doing i think that again you get rooted back to what you're doing and i think that is something that you should continue to do every day because if you're thinking that somebody is going to come in your life and is going to help you through the journey i don't think that's going to happen it is you yourself so ankit two parts to this are there certain principles with which you conduct yourself personally and in your business because like being a founder is a very lonely journey at times yeah. and when you go through this there needs to be certain principles or set of frameworks that you conduct yourself by yeah so uh, what are those principles have they changed over time uh, have they remained constant yeah. how do you review them uh, yeah so talking about the principles uh, yes uh, i i think uh, i I've, i've learned it the hard way uh, i'm always a believer of hard work so you know some of the principles that i've taken in my life is that you know 
and in fact this was written written in one of the book i was reading about one one that it says there are two type of companies that exist uh, in your life one is uh, uh, there are and eventually tell you when you're running a company there are two things which will come in your life uh, when you are when you want to take a decision there's going to be a easy road there's going to be a very difficult road 99% of the companies take easy decisions which are going to take them from a to b uh, very fast very easily and there is just 1% of the companies who take uh, decision b which is really hard working which is really which is really going to mess up your personal life or probably you know disbalance you uh, from what you do fundamentally in your life right so i am a believer of that 1% i believe that hard work is something which is very very important so i believe this is one solid fundamental that i believe in anybody in my company who comes up so yesterday there was a designer who is a funny she is a furniture designer company and she said uh, uh, you know and and we were having a philosophical difference in uh, how how should we look at uh, you know building designs so like should we have thousands of furnitures or should we have let's say hundreds of furniture and she happened to mention on the first instance that we cannot have thousands of furniture and i said why and she said uh, uh, these thousands of the furniture is going to be very very difficult to manufacture and invent right now i said if this is a problem to solve this is what i love to do <laughs> because this is nobody going to solve right let me solve it because this is going to become my mode this is going to become my reason for success because every hard thing is going to give you something back right so you cannot base your decision saying something is hard or something is soft this is one fundamental i believe in second fundamental that i believe very strongly in is about customer centricity i believe anybody who misses a customer in their whole product life or the journey of being an entrepreneur i think you the moment you feel uh, you have understood everything uh, you have understood the customer very well that is the day probably you are going to go down the customer will keep on adapting to the new needs customer will keep on adapting to understand uh, make you make you give you everything uh, uh, new and new and new if you are not learning constantly you bound to fail i think these are the two fundamental principles that i keep myself busy with uh anything else is is momentarily maybe you know i just take up a decision based on how is the surrounding and what is the you know decision that we have to go considering my short term goals and long term goals so the fundamentals are hard work is something we cannot get rid of second is customer is something which is always has to be placed in front of you before you make a call and ankit i'm just trying to go back to the early days because i think if you have a strong foundation uh scale up becomes easy and one of the things which i have seen with you is i think the foundations that you have built uh have been uh i i think fairly contrarian uh from that point of time when it it was built but it has enabled you to scale well uh and aisa nahi hua ki ab wapas gaye it has not caused all that capital inefficiency right yeah. so a you decided to do mattress b you decided to do mattress digitally uh, uh possibly the c you decided to manufacture mattresses yeah uh d you decided not to invest in brand uh yeah. brand building you yeah, spend on customer acquisition so fairly contrarian to pretty much everything which was out there and aisa nahi hai ki you had an experience of uh building like two three businesses before that so how did you come to these conclusions if you can walk through that uh good good uh, good, good i think uh, this goes to how you know how my childhood went uh, how people around me were when i was in college when i was in school so i you know i think as a businessman and entrepreneur you would always realize if you are an entrepreneur you want to become an entrepreneur you would always have certain memories throughout your life uh, even from your childhood times i think i had certain memories in my mind which probably you know were always in the back of my head and whenever i thought about it, it always came very strong right so it's a cognitive mind which is always storing a lot of stuff for me so i i learned a lot of stuff uh, during my childhood uh, one of the stuff uh, that i realized is that word of mouth is of utmost importance in the world if somebody loves your product and if they speak about your product to anybody it's 99% sure that the other person is going to buy that product so i believe that you know if if my mother has to buy a refrigerator she would always call my masi and she would always probably call a nearby friend and ask them like what is the refrigerator you bought and how is it performing and they said you know why don't you buy a kelvin maybe there that point of time they had a kelvin or kelvin uh, brand as a refrigerator right and and she bought it without without going to a sales 
person and asking them what is the refrigerator and what should I buy. Uh, similarly, uh, I've seen my wife, I've seen myself. Uh, we always try to understand from my nearby uh, people that what is it that is good in their life. So the first fundamental that I learned when I was you know, growing up in my life is that word of mouth is of utmost importance. Nobody can break that. Um, second uh, thing that I realized is uh, if, if let's say you happen to use a product uh, and if that product has uh, really served you great, you happen to become a fan of it and you can just not get rid of that brand ultimately. Let's say, for example, if you're used to having, uh, if you're used to, let's say, using an Apple phone and if you loved it, I'm sure you will continue to buy Apple phone in your life. Um, I can give you n number of examples. If you love the product, you'll continue to use them, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is, if the quality of the product, if the, uh, the, the fundamentals on which the product has been built are so strongly connected and serving the purpose of a person, the customer will always remain loyal to you. So the loyalty comes not by uh, referring it to the people, the loyalty comes by making sure that the product is actually awesome. So, so this is another fundamental that whatever product or the service that you're giving, or building for your customers has to be amazing. Has to it? Just, you just cannot compromise. It's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be stupidity if you're thinking about it. So that is also I you know learned up during my uh, during my life. Third is I think I believe in honesty a lot. Uh, I don't know why, but this is I think this is also natural, which has grown on me. I'm 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 generally very honest. I'm generally very morally high, uh, and I think in in our conversation you would have realized this. Yes. Uh, I am generally very, very moral and ethical. I, I feel obligated when somebody calls me that, you know, I have to help them in something like that. Uh, uh, so, you know, being moral and being ethical in the conversation and being a true human. Um, and I felt that, you know, uh, you cannot just fool anybody. So this also became as a very strong fundamental to me that uh, if I'm building a product and if I'm uh, making some services for my customers, uh, I just cannot fool them. So I, even if I could increase the prices of my product, I just never did that because I felt I cannot cheat my customers. If I'm cheating them, they're come, they're going to come back to me someday and they're going to say, yeah, I just don't totally like this. But I've seen this lot of examples in my life, in, in my house itself. My, uh, my daddy will, uh, get a canaster of ghee. Uh, you know, those old days I was in Matra and he used to buy a canaster and he used to pay about 110 rupees per kg for some ghee. And then he realized, you know, uh, a shopkeeper who used to give him 110 rupees and he found another shopkeeper was giving it 105 rupees. He realized this shopkeeper from which he was actually buying it for the last six years was fooling him every month, right? And he never went to that shop, even though, you know, he's a good friend. All that. So every small experience that you create for a customer plays a very, very important role in, in the long term that, you know, these are the three uh, very strong fundamentals I learned. Uh, I being morally and ethically, I make sure that, you know, I don't cheat my customers any day. Second is uh, word of mouth is very, very important. You have to make your product lovable, shareable, and intelligent, I guess. And third is to earn the uh, loyalty of a customer. You have to custom, the product has to be well thought through. Uh, the service has to be well thought through. It should definitely make an impact of, uh, in somebody's life. I think on these three basic fundamentals, I've built my business. And hence, I'm very contrarian to what generally people do uh, for getting growth. But Angit, uh, I think, uh, see, you have been profitable from day one. I remember Hamesha mm -hmm. uh, Mejabab number constantly. And this is from day one, right? Uh, yeah. a, and the B thing is, uh, uh, you know, uh, but you've grown like three years ago, you were where you were, now you are 10x. Now, three years later, 50x. Uh, it, it, that is how you look at the opportunity. So, uh, like, how do you manage between this growth and profitability? Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, I don't think I, I always keep profitability as my basis for growth. I think uh, I've never thought exactly that I have to be profitable, then only I'm going to run the business, right? It happened to be a product of whatever I did. It, it just happened. So, if my... It's like if you gar if you feed garbage in the garbage is gonna come out. If you're gonna feed the right uh, if you're gonna feed the right raw material, the right product's gonna come out. Which I meant all the fundamentals of doing business, I just fed them very correctly. So the product has to be nice, product has to be intelligent, the customer cannot be fooled, the customer has always to center 
when you're making a decision. So all of this I did and naturally it became that, you know, I became profitable, but I can give you like, uh, in the last four or five months, I don't think that it has been profitable and we know it. Uh, it, it is a very conscious decision that I've taken in the last four or five months to not being confident, uh, to not being profitable because I knew I'm still working on my fundamentals. I'm still making sure the next range of products like the fit furniture products that I've created are, are not so profitable yet, but I still know that on the tenets I wish on which I've built big for the last five, six years, I'm going to continue building them on furniture and I'm going to, it's going to work. And I just want to raise it up to make sure, you know, I'm able to scale faster and hence I'm ready to compromise on profitability. But the whole tenets on which I build matters is, I think same are being copied and pasted through furniture, which I know is a journey. It, it, the success cannot come, the profitability cannot come just overnight. And it's very cheering. So, you know, I, I, I read it somewhere. Uh, yes, it is very, very important. I think everybody sh uh, should know this, that uh, there are two things which are very, very important in doing the business. One is uh, there has to be a path to profitability. If you do not have a path to profitability, uh, then you should be lucky, uh, which I guess most of us would not be. Um, and if you have a path to profitability, there has to be somebody chasing that path to profitability. So I made this very, very important in my whole week uh, life that you, know, you have to have a path to profitability to understand because the fund business cannot be done without fundamentals. It could be two years, it could be four years, it could be six years, but there has to be a path. And there has to be a person. I feel it should be a CEO as I am. Uh, and I, I just run on that part and make sure that you know after three months or six months or nine months or one year, we have to become profitable because this is a path. And it might happen after nine months that you know I it tend to take one more experiment and again might turn myself into you know non-profitable company. But I it's a very conscious decision. So, but what is important is that that you know that you're working on the right path. The fundamentals of doing for business are very, very strong. And you're, you're working on those fundamentals. If you tend to lose either of this, I guess you have got to be lucky. Coming to the uh, question of luck, Ankit, I think that was my next question. Mm -hmm. So Wakefit, I think, was created at a fairly interesting time. You know, uh, marketplaces like Amazon, Flipkart, were going heavy on, um, you know, home products. I think they started distributing great products like Wakefit and Wakefit did well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think what is that importance of luck in an entrepreneur's life? Uh, how do you look at it? Uh, I would love your perspective on this. And if you can give examples uh, around this, it would be very helpful for the audience here. Sure. Uh... I'm, uh, yes, I'm a strong disbeliever uh, of luck. I don't think anything like that exists uh, in the world that, you know, you got to be lucky. In fact, when you said Amazon Flipkart were there trying to distribute, for the first two years, you would be surprised to know that Amazon did not have a category called matters. They did not have a category at all. They just said, you know, just list it and it will probably go into, let's say home as a category. There was a category called home. And there was nothing beneath it. There was no furniture, there was no sofa, there was no mattress, no pillow, nothing. There was just home. Everything was home. So it was not even thought through from Amazon side. Uh, similarly for Flipkart. Flipkart, I think, so at that point of time, there were just two people who were selling online. I, it was one big fit and there was one more brand who was just trying to sell online uh, the mattresses. Uh, so I don't think I was lucky because for the first two years, I had to literally create. Today, even when I go on a call with Amazon people, I tell them, hey, I created your category <laughs> because I know I created those categories on Amazon. But there was just nobody and this ecosystem did not exist. I had to literally fight it. Um, uh, the, the second important thing uh, here to notice, uh, Yash, is that, you know, it is good that if you become lucky, uh, it is good uh, if it happens to you, you know, you took a decision, you took a bet on a decision and it just works for you. But I don't think uh, being lucky is something that you can control. Uh, and if, uh, if the things are not in your control, there are very high chances that it might fail. And if it fails, you cannot just put it to a luck saying, hey, my luck was bad, my luck was good. So, so you, have to, you have to control things by yourself. I don't think it's going to, uh, I don't think Facebook, uh, Zuckerberg would have said, you know, I would just become lucky and then Facebook just pick up or Uber would have thought it's going to be lucky. I think everybody, I've, I've read, I'm a, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, Walmart. I'm a big fan of uh, the guy who has built Walmart. I've read his book two, three times. And if you just look at his life, you would see how much hard work this guy has done. Like, 
this is one of the entrepreneurs that I believed was not seen the best in his life. I don't think he has been lucky ever. Uh, in fact, he just constantly worked hard, worked hard, worked hard, stick uh, true to what he wanted to build and just kept on building. Today itself, you know, today as we're talking, I think probably he's still thinking about how to make Walmart build it, right? So it, it is very important that you should not let yourself depend to luck. If it happens, well and good, but I don't think it happens very often. If it happens good to you, probably it can happen worse to you. Uh, I think I look at it from my perspective. I just don't imagine that luck would do any favor to me. But uh, Ankit, uh, moving to the next section is a failure. And I, I think uh, how does an entrepreneur takes failure? How does he thinks about failure? How he uh, navigates failure is important, right? So in your journey, if you have an approach towards this or how you have navigated this, if you can give the audience examples, it would be very helpful. Yeah, sure. I think I mentioned a lot of uh, examples about, you know, Wakefield getting failed. Uh, when I said customers being unhappy, I used to wake up. And when I launched the product, it did not work. So I think I, I can give you a few more examples. Uh, so I happened to uh, launch uh, some sort of pillows for Wakefield. And it was six months of time. I used to, you know, I in the first six months, it was just horrible. Every customer that I sent the pillows, I got a call saying, hey, I love your matters, but just hate your pillows. I, and it's just equal reaction to both of them on the hate side and the love side. So, uh, so I kept on building it. I kept on distributing it and just realized, you know, I built a worst product in my life. And I had to just, and, and it started contributing about 10% of my sales. It was significant revenue I was making using, you know, selling pillows. And, but I had to discontinue. I took a heart for saying, you know, stop selling pillows because it's just not making my personal life. Even though it is making a decent amount of margins, uh, even though it's contributing 10% of my sales, uh, I just I had to take that as you. Uh, so, uh, I, I can give you a few more examples. Uh, we happened to set up a furniture factory. Uh, uh, it was during Corona time uh, when we decided that we're going to set up ourselves into furniture domain. Um, I'm talking about March, April last year. Uh, I, I hired a consultant, uh, and, and this consultant uh, happened to you know, suggest me a list of machines that I should buy because this this whole industry was new. I did not know anything about how to manufacture the furniture I had to hire a consultant. And this guy um, actually led me to buy certain machines, which are probably not good for me to scale and up, right? So, so I happened to start up a company or a factory. Uh, and then I hired a, I hired a person uh, from the same industry. And I felt that, you know, he's a good guy for, for my factory. And I have to do it. This is not a good guy. Uh, so, so I took a bad decision. Uh, uh, but I started up somehow. Uh, but what, you know, in, in the first three months of when I started this factory with this poor uh, factory manager and the poor machines, what I learned very quickly is that I made a wrong decision. Uh, and I, I just realized it. And I don't think I've kept it to myself. You know, I've been very, very vocal to my new leadership team, uh, to the people inside my factories, different managers that I've had. And I've been very, very vocal that, hey, we, got, we made a mistake by probably, you know, getting these machines on the floor. And this is because of this, I think the whole Wakefield journey is going to be delayed by six months. But the truth is truth. I, I don't think mm -hmm. failure is something which can be ignored. I believe uh, failure is something which is going to be part of the entrepreneurial life. Uh, and I also believe if you're not having failures early stage in your life, you might end up failing big last time, uh, probably when it is going to be very difficult to uh, you know, survive if you're failing. So, I, I look at uh, failure, uh, yes, in a very different way. I see, I see them that you have to quickly fail. In fact, now I've devised one journey in my company where I've you know, broken the whole journey stages of uh, whenever I'm launching in a new category of the product or a new, new product lines or any new business. Um, I say zero to one, one to 10 and 10 to uh, one. And I say zero to one journey has to be about failure. So you have to quickly go jump and start that category. So for example, uh, we uh, we wanted to start uh, uh, the wardrobes uh, as one of the category uh, for big fit. And then I happened to you know take a decision. You know, we are writing a zero to one journey, which means we have to make you know, we have to just people let people know that we're selling wardrobes and we're manufacturing wardrobes. We happen to just go quickly in the market. What is selling? Took interviews of very few people. It was just a two week exercise where we just wanted to realize what is selling in the market. We took that as a bet, uh, put that into a factory for production. 
we did not know how to manufacture wardrobes i decided to just say to my factory manager which was poor i said go ahead and just make those wardrobes he made the worst wardrobe that he could make and i believe this is a good wardrobe to go with right so we 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 manufactured 10 wardrobes out of 10 seven were actually wrong we delivered it to customers we took them back and then we again remade them and then sent it back this whole job kept on happening for almost three months but i think the intent was very very different yes the intent was to just quickly learn on how the market reacts how we where the weak fit stands uh, what kind of products are being liked by customers how do they look at experience of installing the uh, wardrobe when do they expect the wardrobe should come i think there are a lot of questions that you have to answer before you understand the whole subject like in mattresses i think i was you know i was lucky uh, that you know i did not had to grow so much i was you know i was one guy who was making a lakh rupee a month as a salary you know, i did not know anything beyond that i was saying hey if i could make 2 lakhs a month i'll be probably happy so i did not had i had lots of patience so even if i'm selling 2 3 months a day i was probably making a lot more money than i was making earlier uh, so i had a lot of patience but now i become a little impatient so that's why i say failure has to become the part of your journey as an entrepreneur because you might want to fail as soon as possible so and i have designed a journey which is called 0 to 1 where everybody is bound to fail from design to factory to logistics to installation to customer experience but i say it's going to be a three months job so that you can learn how to not fail again and then you have you have one to x uh, x to 10x and 10x to 100x and these are different journeys which are based on those failures right like, how do you define success then if you look at failure in this way like when what do you say is success for you what do you say is success for your company uh and of course you have mentioned customer happiness definitely as being one great product being one but like uh beyond this what are the other elements that you look at so, so uh i think the one true element i look at is word of mouth uh, which is as i said uh, fundamental if i uh if you know there are, let's say 100 people who bought wardrobe uh, uh, from my company and uh, if i would give a task to my customer experience team to call up the team uh, call up the customers and ask them uh, how did they get to know about wakefit if let's say more than 25 30 percent of them say that you know i got to know from a friend and he said why don't you buy uh, wakefit wardrobe you're looking forward to buy one i think that is a success i believe that's where i take a clue that you know i'm doing i'm on the right path that you know people are saying up front to other people that why don't you look at this from me but i think uh, again ankit one thing about you is your ability to focus right so while there were 20 different product categories of mattress you picked up one mm-hmm. there were various versions of um, uh, wardrobes customized wardrobes shisham wardrobes x wardrobes y wardrobes mm-hmm. you picked up one and went ahead with it mm-hmm. like uh, what is your approach over there so uh, the approach was uh, yes zero to one journey as i said i think that zero to one journey extended a little bit we have to plan it for three to six months i think it went more than six months uh, the approach there is whatever you know you are able to manufacture whatever you are able to sell whatever you could you know put up in just two to three weeks of time and so they will start experiencing the whole business i think with that intent i started and as i said then the followed journey is x to 10x Uh, the intent is to build the X to 10X journey on zero to one journey, and I'm sure we're going to have those sliding wardrobes. I'm going to have those shisham wardrobes. I'm going to have those customized wardrobes uh, in your future. So, uh, Ankit, coming back to a next section on finances, right? So, a lot of entrepreneurs do not understand how to manage their own personal finances, how to do capital allocation in the company. How do you approach both of this? like when in your six years of your journey yeah. uh, i so, i i think jab aap you know uh 50 crore kar rahe the saal ko aur jab aap 500 crore kar rahe ho saal ka yeah. i have not seen a lot of difference in your attitude the way that you live life so like how do you approach your personal finances which is one set of questions and one thought process which i want to understand and the second which i want to understand is how do you look at capital allocation because you allocated capital towards factory you allocated capital towards possibly supply chain uh um, possibly i think the right elements of uh, where capital should go so if you can touch on both these aspects sure i think uh, i would start with the personal finances uh, uh, i i think it's going to be very very personal to different different uh, people sitting in this room uh, everybody has a different uh, need for different levels of cash in the life for the finances in the life 
I think uh, since I have, you know, my upbringing from a family where uh, my father started a job with this. So I remember 100 rupees a month as a family where a milk packet uh, would probably feed me for half a day. Uh, wherein my father would have to think that I'm going to get the next milk packet because they would probably out of the money. So uh, I've seen those. I'm, I'm sure I have not seen my father have seen. Um, but I've seen, I've observed, I have really lived among a set of people where I've seen uh, uh, people cracking jokes in the night and just sleeping and they're just continuously laughing and laughing and laughing and just, just, just slept. And I've seen a different part of my life uh, in the beginning of the childhood where I've seen the most important part in your uh, life is to be happy, to be, to be motivated, to be uh, expressive. Uh, to be, uh, you know, energetic. I think uh, money has not played so important role in my life because I believe money is something which is, which can be earned, uh, which which will always fall short. Uh, there's no end to saying, you know, I'm happy with this much of money, even though whatever stories that you know we would end up here. You know, at one point of time, I said a lakh rupee salary is going to be so amazing. Uh, I'm, I just don't need beyond anything. And then there come a point that five lakh a month is something which is going to be amazing. And then there comes a point that a crore probably is not not so bad. And then there, I'm sure there would be a point that uh, when I would say 100 crores is not a bad idea, right? So I, I think everybody grows in their life and they see different phases. You become a father, uh, your, your father becomes dependent on you, uh, you're, you're, you're running a family, then you realize that whole employees has become a family to you. Today we have about 3,000 people working for us. I feel this is my extended family. So I feel obligated to make money for them. Uh, it's a very different fundamental that I live with. So, and hence, I've not, you know, paid very important, uh, given any importance to personal finances. Uh, I think this is going to be very subjective. Yes, uh, this is how I am. Uh, but if you look at uh, the company wise, the second question where how have you allocated uh, the money? Which whenever I've raised money from Sequoia or Bali Invest, uh, so I think I've always looked at how am I going to continue to grow. Uh, and what are the enablers for me to continue to grow basis the sustainability of profitability. So, so for example, if, if I know that my company is going to grow organically because of these fundamentals that I built, um, and I'm going to need the money to continue to feed those fundamentals, because let's say for one of the fundamental of my uh, brand wake fit is it has to be affordable. So if it has to be affordable, it has to be made affordable every day. And if it has to be made affordable, you've got to get machines, you got to get smart people. You got to get uh, the right choice of materials. You got to get backward integration. You got to get contracts done for years and years with with your suppliers so that they can give you the best prices, right? You you have to invest a lot of money in those angles. So if your fundamental of doing the business, uh, one of the fundamental of doing the business is to make your products affordable. So it becomes very very important for you that that you focus on that fundamental and hence you invest your money. Uh, similarly, it could be true. Uh, for example, uh, Amazon. Uh, is a very great example of building a fundamental of customer centricity. They say uh, delivering a product in time is so important for them uh, that they would do anything for it. And hence they invested money in it. So it is about which fundamental on which you're building a business. And if that fundamental needs money, the finance for it, I guess you should invest in it because that on that basis only you're going to build a business. So it's, it's going to be again subjective. I believe what you are building and why you are building. If you know it, you will always know where to invest your money. So, uh, I think a couple of elements which I want to touch upon on what you said. So, first of all, is the team. Um, mm -hmm. You grew from yourself. Uh, I think Chaitanya with you. Now you have three thousand people. How have you thought about team building? How have you thought about delegation? How have you thought about uh, uh, you know uh, who to get the work done in a defined time frame while motivating and empowering your people? So what is those aspects of team building for you? Yeah, uh, so yes, uh, how it went is, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is this I realized uh, very late in my life, uh, in my entrepreneurial life, that team is something which is going to be of very, very high importance. If I had, let's say, hired my team members about four years back, uh, we could, could have been a different company today than what it is. I'm saying it could have been a better company than what it is today. Uh, I realized the importance of getting the right team members at the right time is so important to your business that at any given point in time, if you're not having the right people working with you, if they're not growing with you, then you're doing a blunder to your life. I've seen 
we we hired a lot of uh, tech janta uh, and we hired uh, tech janta which was very very junior uh, in the early stages of their life i've seen it's almost four years they have never left they have never complained they are always happy and they are always elated if i they talking to me or a customer you know they do very very fundamental things but when i hire techies from the market they come with weird expectations it's very very difficult to come you know bring them to the fundamentals of you know we we are not a company is going to throw a party every friday right we are not that we we are, we are working for your customers if it even takes us to work from midnight at on a sunday we work on it so we are building a different culture all together so i realized the importance then you you got to have your senior leadership team at least starting to work work with you as soon as possible the moment you become a little bigger and you start getting those people working with you it's very difficult to get them connected and if you want them to be connected to you you have to invest a lot of time so this is the second phase of uh, so what i did i did not hire a lot of right people in the beginning then i ended up realizing that it is very very important because of certain experiences within the company now i have hired too many uh, you know nice brains and people with the right attitude but then now then i have realized now that you know, hiring them is okay but they are not going to do wonders by themselves so what i do today is uh, i invest a lot of my time with them just to tell them how we fit begin what happened how do i think how customers think what are the basic principles on you should also take your decisions on uh, you won't believe this yes but uh, any uh, any senior person who comes in my company today uh, i commit myself every day one hour uh with that person for next one month and in that one hour we don't talk about ppts we don't talk about uh, what is the target for tomorrow what is it you know you is your job profile i i go and walk with him i just take him or her outside and there's a beautiful place you know where the factory i think this is one of the wonderful thing near the factory is always calm and beautiful and silent a lot of trees so you just have to take long walks one hour one and a half hour and we just talk about fundamentals and and then slowly and steadily you realize they start talking that language and and that is the point you start realizing hey they are on their own you don't really need to tell them what to do because they now know what wakefield wants to become and why and how it has become what it is today so it's very important that you hire people as early as possible if you have money uh, if you do not have hired and if uh, if you think that it's very important that you should have people in your company uh, then whenever you hire you have to invest a lot of time with them that first 4 6 8 weeks of you spending time with them is actually define how they are going to take that company from here to the next uh, next year or probably for the rest of us second question is on uh, uh, sorry a scale uh, when wakefit started i think there's so many mattress companies that started with it but the scale that wakefit has achieved is quite unbelievable so i think why do you think that would that that what was the case oh so the case was very simple i think we were we were the first customer centric company i think uh, uh, i don't think anybody i know uh, even knows who have sold their mattress why right? i mean <laughs> you go, go and happen to buy a mattress from a shop uh, i don't think the brand would know that you have bought a mattress forget about why did you buy a mattress they would not know you have bought a mattress i think we were directly connected to the consumers and we knew what are the pains that the consumers going through and hence we were able to build our product and services around that uh, that is one of the reason that we were able to scale second is uh, uh, you know in whenever there is a market which is maturing up which is growing up you would see always me to mattresses companies or any in your in your you know like you would see many me to companies uh, so we we saw there was one point in time about a year back uh, about two years back i think it was every week there used to be a start and and we used to see this cat this pet this head this that right there was so many so many copy cats who just copied the idea and said you know we just want to go to sell it online uh, but uh, the funny thing is uh, you know from outside it looks uh, you know you just have to sell a mattress on it right what is there like i have a factory or uh, let's say i do, even do not have a factory i know somebody who owns a factory you know i can buy a mattress start selling them on but i think uh they just don't realize that uh building a business an online specific business uh is is a very different ball game uh than selling up mattresses or a furniture online i think you have to learn that art you have to learn that journey you have to you have to go immerse yourself so deep that uh, you and your team realize that what is of so utmost importance i think people realize it only after one year or two year of failing uh which i guess many people in the first six months realize that it's not scaling up for them 
they are not able to make profits not selling for them they just die out so i i believe we we believed much more strongly than anybody else in the market in terms of having those strong fundamentals of affordability customer centricity the great product uh, firstly uh, these three fundamentals i think made us alive and made us continue to scale even though there was just every week one startup popping up ankit very few people understand risk uh i think very few people are able to quantify risk and decide what risk to take what risk not to take i think in a life of an entrepreneur and in a venture it is important uh to define that and i think take those risks only that will not kill you so how have you approached that and if you can just i think give examples of risks in your uh yeah. venture journey that you took uh and i think if you can give examples of risk you thing that you should not have taken sure so uh, i think i've progressed of you know maturing up as an entrepreneur in the last 6 years so uh, i have i have looked at risk at different angles in the last 6 years so uh, the first risk i was always to quit a job and start up a company right that was the biggest risk i would still say it's still the biggest risk but i think it's still worth it uh, you know that emotion has to be so important you have to be an idiot to really believe in yourself and just keep on doing it irrespective of what happens Uh, but then came the risk that you know you have to set up a factory, and I I needed uh, about five lakh rupees uh, to start up uh, my business, and I happened to be on the roads. So I was just trying to figure out if anybody is willing to invest in my business. Fortunately, I found two people who gave me two point five lakh each. <laughs> Fortunately, just just this for joke's sake, I think these two point five lakh people are now worth thirty seven point five crores, <laughs> just enjoying their life. <laughs> so I think uh, that part of time, the two point five lakh was so important because I did not have that much of money there to be. and then that 2.5 was very important uh, i'll i'll tell you the fundamental of it but i'm just giving you in different phases how i looked at risk uh, and then then came came time when i was able to set up a factory that i had to buy smarter machines uh, so any machine i remember my first machine where i i vacuum packed the mattresses costed me about 25 lakhs and i had to negotiate with the supplier for almost two months uh, because i just could not believe buying a 25 lakhs worth of machine is even possible for me right i had to debate so much and i had to sell so much of the story to this guy thing this was a turkish guy and i said you know believe me if you have one machine sold to wake fit uh, i'll i'll become a showroom for you you invite any tom dick and harry across india i'll just welcome them give them food also you <laughs> you know this is, i'll i'll support you in any way so this became that you know at that point of time it became a uh, risk of 25 lakhs as the biggest risk in my life and then i think today you know i progress of course uh, but today you know we have taken a risk where we have we have done a capex investment of about 100 crores in the last four months and it's such a big risk uh, as on today which i believe is going to be very small probably 3 years for the strong run we continue to you know deliver the way that we delivered today so at different stages of your life you see risks very differently and i believe it is very very important that you realize that you know you have to vet your risk very very diligently you have to believe that you are very very calculative when you approach at that point of time uh, they would always be you can always you know think that the vc money will come uh, some magic will happen uh, you know you don't need to worry about it just go ahead and expect you know ex- uh, do the expenses of those uh, money that you have with you but i guess it's going to be a uh, wrong way of uh, you know deciding or taking a decision on the finances uh, i believe the risk always need to be very very calculated uh, i'm sure as an entrepreneur you will be biased uh, because you would have your own certain beliefs and there are certain emotions within you is going to be driving um, you know whether to take the risk or not and of course you will be biased but what all i am saying is that you have to be very very calculated you cannot just take it saying some money will come in future and but know. so i think help me understand this right uh, how did you walk through the risk of this 100 crore investment and i know there have been various times in your journey that you have uh, considered of doing a retail store But you have always shied away from that. So why did you not take that risk, and why are you taking this risk? Okay. So by the way, we are taking that risk also now. <laughs> All right. So uh, so this hundred crore of investment, I think, is coming from a very strong belief. Uh, if you if you happen to understand Bigfoot, uh, you would realize that a uh, lot of people know us that you know we are the biggest online mattress company in India. Uh, I think some of the facts I'll throw you, and you will be surprised also probably. We are the third largest mattress company in India now. uh in online offline put together it's just not on uh we are the largest brand selling mattress protector in india we sell you the biggest brand for selling mattress protectors 
you're the biggest brand selling pillows online in india you're the biggest brand selling solid wood beds in online or offline in the whole whole of india with the biggest who are selling the most of solid wood beds in india so what you would what i'm trying to convey is in these four five euro products we have been able to become something over a period of four years five years or six years and now we have understood the process of uh, learning from a consumer learning on uh, making sure those fundamentals that we as wake fit believe in how to put them in every product that we launch and hence now we have become very very comfortable in taking that risk we know that that we have chosen to become a furniture company tomorrow a home solutions company tomorrow and we know that we have done for the last 6 years we have created four or five large uh, consumer products which are now the biggest in india or the third largest uh, in india we are very very confident that we should be able to convert the next of the products line uh, into the same fashion so that is how you know i, I believe we have uh, start looking at risk why are you taking the risk of doing a store now and not two years or three years down the, before yeah so uh, uh, so it was never a risk uh, yes uh, we have we have always seen there are hundreds and thousands of the market where uh, you know offline market works it just works right so it's not a risk as a risk uh, is about uh, having that fundamental back then your theory i'll tell you why weekfit till date has not opened up any uh, offline store in 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 proper city market uh, because it just did not align with the fundamental of the company uh, the fundamental one of the fundamental i'll again repeat is we have to make sure that our products are affordable and we did that mathematics we figured out when i was just a mattress protector pillow bed sheet company i'm talking about that time we realized that if we have to sell this product we have to make sure that there are at least 30% of the margin has to be kept for that salesman sitting not not salesman the shop owner or let's say if we are the shop owner we have to make sure that 30% let's say if you're buying a 10000 rupees mattresses that 3000 rupees are required to run that store and we realize if you we going to because that money is going to come from the customer only ultimately you have to put that back to the customers the moment you do that your prices will become more and more the moment you increase the prices the journey starts full time so we realize that we just cannot become unaffordable because the truth or the basic behind us is that we have to be affordable at any point in our life that is a true mantra of wake fit we have to make sure we are aam janta ka mattress like people should just love us and everybody should be able to afford us that is the true thing now that the wake fit has gone into a furniture store the mathematics has totally changed we now see that the same store can probably give you much more revenue the same store can bring you customer for different reasons and hence cost of acquiring a customer in offline would not be 30% would probably be 6% or 8% or 10% or 15% depending on how well we execute it so now we are contemplating that how much risk is there in the next one year or two year to figure out what is the cost of acquisition when you are running an offline store hence we decided to do an experiment we are saying let's set up about 10 experience centers in in let's say different cities and let's work for it on about next one year if those 10 stores are going to become profitable in terms of making sure that the customer acquisition cost is very very low compared to the market we will continue to invest we will ensure that you know we will have hundreds and thousands of the shops uh, all across india all across the world but if it happens that you know it adds up to the cost of Uh, you know, running the store and hence the customer has to pay. We would be the first one to say that let's just shut shops. But two things: how do you look at the future, uh, uh, Ankit? What motivates you? I mean, what do you think you can be or Wakefit can be three years down the line? Uh, because as you said, like, कभी आपको पांच लाख का investment ज़्यादा लगा था, फिर पच्चीस लाख, आठ सौ करोड़ का. Tomorrow it will be a thousand crores. Yeah. How do you look at the future? and and intertwined to that question is what motivates you uh, so uh, so frankly speaking uh, yes i do not i don't think i look at what we should become in 3 years 5 years i think we, i i have a hidden mission or a, you know a vision in my head uh, but the vision or the mission that i have is that i want to i want to uh, remove the gap between a rich and a poor and i want to make sure that those many unskilled people in india should be upskilled uh, for example if i'm a from a furniture company i should be able to uplift so many people in india and should make them so progressive in their life that you know they can 
earn a decent life for themselves and hence they should not be today roaming on a on a bicycle and looking for a job anywhere they should be enabled themselves so I'm, you know we so the bigger vision is that how can i make every indian uh, skillful and hence become uh, self dependent and live a better life so that's a that's a hidden philosophy behind and i think that is what keeps me motivated when i see when i say 3000 people i think you would see in the companies like wake fit or the consumer brand uh, having more and more number of people is a crime because we feel that you know it's going to be a lot more burden company it's going to be very heavy right people want to have a very lean uh, lean company a very minimal number of people but at, at a different end i believe i should have thousands thousands uh, you know of people working for me because i would be able to upskill them and bring betterment in their life and and in future i should be i know i should be looking at uh, creating so many opportunities for a poor class of people that you know they can skill up themselves and hence you know lead a very meaningful and a very uh, decent life for themselves ankit i still have so many questions but i it, i'm conscious of the time uh, one last question if you have to redo some things in your journey what mm-hmm. are the one or two things that you would redo okay uh, i guess uh, i guess one thing for sure that i'll redo uh, i i think i would definitely if if i am able to go back to my time i would probably hire a nice hr guy earlier in my life <laughs> so i'm able to put the right team uh, behind my whole bit i think i just lost that time that uh, you know i kept on doing and i, I see see in a in a hint, uh, hindsight i also believe that you know since there was nobody and since i was i was the one who was actually executing and the chetan was the one you know who was ex- actually executing i believe we were able to uh endorse those fundamentals and principles so so forcefully into the company then you know everybody got that culture right so in a hindsight i feel because we were there we were running it executing day in day life we were able to imbibe those principles very very strongly if that might have not happened if let's say we had early believers those who were the senior leadership and they would have driven the company in the way that they wanted uh but i i still feel that you know if if let's say we had what people that i have today they could have been with me about 3 4 years before uh and if i had been able to spend a lot of time with them uh i i believe we would have made a better way perfect uh ankit thank you so much for taking out so much time my pleasure for everyone who is there i i think uh, there's a very interesting founder linked to the same series the founder of live space ramakan sharma who is there tomorrow from 11 to 12:30 um um uh, so i i think do sign up for that uh, again it will be a very interesting session ramakan has created live space before that mintra has been an angel investor in a bunch of things uh, but ankit thank you so much for taking so much time uh, thank you thank you everyone thank you guys thank you for listening to me bye bye